For most people, the term virtual reality, or VR, conjures up images of video gaming. But did you know that many experts believe virtual reality and augmented reality technologies will become a critical component of firefighter training in the near future? Welcome to Learn Something New by NFPA Journal. The world's first augmented reality, or AR headset, dates back to the 1960s, when scientists created a device that displayed crude computer-generated images of shapes over whatever environment the user was in. That's what distinguishes AR from VR, by the way. AR displays a virtual world on top of a room or other space, but users can still see some of what's actually there, whereas VR totally blinds users, so to speak, to the space they're actually in. In other words, you can only see a virtual world when you're using VR. VR first emerged in the 80s, and from the beginning, people saw its worth for much more than just a gaming tool. This 1985 video from NASA shows us an astronaut using an early VR headset for training. The past couple of decades have seen AR and VR tech, collectively known as immersive learning, explode in popularity for training professionals in fields like healthcare and the military. In some parts of the world, including Europe and Australia, firefighters have also embraced immersive learning for training. But in the US, the fire service has yet to put it to widespread use. That's likely to change in coming years, experts say, as the technology continues to advance and its benefits compared to live fire training are more widely communicated. So what are those benefits? And what are some of the barriers standing in the way of more widespread adoption of immersive learning in the fire service? Proponents of the technology say two main benefits of immersive learning are that it provides firefighters with a safer way to train, while having less of an environmental impact. NFPA data shows that on average between 1977 and 2018, about nine firefighters a year died in training accidents. Several thousand more were injured, allowing them to train first using something like VR where there's no risk of smoke inhalation or burns or falling off of a ladder or a ledge, eliminates most of this hazard, proponents say. It's one of the reasons the US Fire Administration in 2020 released a statement in support of immersive learning. VR technology is raising the bar in firefighter training, the administration said, while helping save lives and conserve valuable resources. The use of VR technology allows training for incidents that cannot easily be replicated or may be very costly to recreate, not to mention eliminating the hazards involved in live training. Conserving valuable resources, as the administration put it, is the other important reason experts envision a rich future of immersive learning in the fire service. Little research has been done to quantify the environmental impact of live fire training facilities, but by nature these facilities are major water consumers and carbon emitters. If you don't have to use real water or real fire to train, you do away with that impact. Other benefits to immersive learning, its proponents say, are its ability to train firefighters in unique, complex, and emerging response scenarios like electric vehicle fires, as well as its ability to attract new generations to the fire service. Here's Executive Director of the North American Fire Training Directors, Ken Willett, discussing the latter. I've had some feedback from people who have said that these systems, when they use them in some of their outreach campaigns, have been great. And I'll use the term marketing. But I think it's more recruitment, recruitment tools, because people will say, geez, I've always thought about being a firefighter, but I'm afraid I don't understand this. What's it like? Well, here, let me give you a chance. They may connect to that experience because the new technology creates an immersive experience where you can feel it and see the reaction of the fire to your extinguishing events. That may light a spark in somebody to say, that's what I want to do. For all its benefits, there are some drawbacks to immersive learning though. One is the cost. The setup you see here, manufactured by an Australia-based company called Flame Systems, costs about $50,000. That's a pretty big build afoot for smaller departments. Now, there are some funding options out there for departments already. Departments are eligible to use FEMA's Assistance to Firefighters grants to help fund investments in AR and VR systems, for example. One thing almost everyone agrees on is that proponents of immersive learning have to be careful as they reach out to fire services in the U.S. and beyond not to try and sell the technology as a replacement for live fire training. Again, here's Ken Willett. If, if we start with the premise 
that augmented learning, virtual reality, augmented reality, and immersive learning are going to be able to eliminate that need, then it's a failed premise. And that is one of the biggest challenges to be overcome is to realize the value of these tools and how else they can be applied and also to recognize the legitimate place of this hands-on live fire training and where does immersive learning and uh, virtual reality augment it and what's the right place to do it. If you want to learn more about immersive learning and its role in firefighter training, be sure to check out my cover story for the winter 2022 edition of NFPA Journal. That story, which includes interviews with several experts on this topic, will be available online at nfpa.org journal on February 15th. Additionally, a new study by the Fire Protection Research Foundation, the research affiliate of NFPA, is planned to take place over the next two years, examining the benefits immersive learning could have on firefighter health and safety, as well as its impact on firefighter skills. Keep an eye out for that project at nfpa.org foundation. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, please let us know. Drop us a positive comment, like them, and share them with your friends and colleagues. As always, be sure to subscribe to NFPA's YouTube channel for more content like this.